Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is October 20th, 2021. This video is called The Indignation. I am feeling led to make this video because I really do not see anyone talking about the reality that we now live in on the earth. And this includes people from um, different perspectives, uh, Christians, uh, patriots, New Agers, people who are believing in uh, that we're ascending into something greater and more glorious. Truthers, people who are um, revealing the truth to people about what's really going on in the world right now. The common theme that I see in all of these people is that they believe that we are going to return to normalcy that we are going to go back to the way things were and that things are going to be all right. But I don't see that. Um, I don't believe any, I don't believe we're ever going back to the way things were in the paradigm that we have lived in for so long. It's critical that you understand that we have been trapped within Babylon the Great. We have been trapped within the satanic system of the earth. It has been Satan's government. The scripture is clear that Satan is the ruler of this world. Jesus and the apostles all called him the ruler of the world, the God of this world. Satan even came to Jesus and, and attempted to tempt Jesus with things that he could offer Jesus in this world. For example, the glory of kingdoms, the glory of Christ becoming king of the earth. What's happened is that the satanic kingdom has now been exposed. Over the last few years, Satan began to be more and more overt. Halftime Super Bowl games filled with satanic imagery for 20 plus years. Many, many popular uh, music artists doing satanic themed music videos, transhumanist themed music videos. Donald Trump came along five years ago and said he was going to clean up the swamp. And when he was president, things came out into the public about the evil things that our leaders do that nobody had a clue about. And now the entire world is in a frenzy and is collectively and progressively taking away the freedoms of all the citizens of the earth. Australia is leading the way with that. They are becoming a totally locked down country that is requiring the you know what mandate. And if you don't do you know what, then you will not be able to buy or sell. You can't open your business and sell, and you can't go into a store 
and buy food. You cannot buy or sell unless you do what they're telling us all to do. But what is it they're telling us to do? They're telling us to take the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is here. We're not going back, but we are going forward and we're going into something that is terrifying right now and will become glorious. I want to take you to several prophetic scriptures today to give you insight into where we are. Let's start with Daniel chapter 2. And I'm not going to read everything in these chapters. I've, I've discussed most of what I will, much of what I have here today in previous videos, including my video series, The Image of the Beast, which you really should watch. In Daniel chapter 2, Daniel interprets King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Nebuchadnezzar doesn't even tell him what the dream was. God tells Daniel what the dream was, and then God gives Daniel the interpretation. And I'm going to start with the interpretation of the fourth kingdom. It begins in Daniel 2 verse 40. There shall be a fourth kingdom, and this kingdom is one that follows the kingdom of Babylon. Okay, but not immediately. There are uh, kingdoms that are revealed to Daniel that come before this one. But there will be a fourth kingdom, strong as iron, because iron breaks to pieces and shatters all things. And like iron that crushes, it shall break and crush all these. And as you saw the feet and the toes partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, it shall be a divided kingdom. But some of the firmness of iron shall be in it, just as you saw iron mixed with the soft clay. And as the toes of the feet were partly iron and partly clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly brittle. As you saw the iron mixed with soft clay, so they will mix with one another in marriage, but they will not hold together just as iron does not mix with clay. This has always been mysterious. What, what did this mean? What does this mean? Well, I believe we're seeing it now. We're seeing them mix iron with clay. We're seeing... We are made of the clay. We are made of the dust of the earth. And they are injecting us with graphene oxide in what is going on now. And that graphene oxide is mixing iron with clay. And there are very strange things happening. Have you seen the black-eyed babies that are being born? Uh, you've heard of many deaths of people because of this strange brew of iron mixing with clay. But I believe this is what Daniel is referring to. Today they are mixing iron with clay, but it will not hold together just as iron does not mix with clay. Verse 44, And in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed, nor shall the kingdom be left to another people. It shall break in pieces all these kingdoms and bring them to an end, and it shall stand forever. Just as you saw that a stone was cut from a mountain by no human hand, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, a great God has made known to the king what shall be after this. The dream is certain and its interpretation sure. Now I want to take you now to Daniel chapter 7 where Daniel sees another vision. 
And here again in this one, he sees he sees four kingdoms. It's very interesting in Daniel chapter 7 that Daniel has a vision of four beasts. He had a vision of four kingdoms, or Nebuchadnezzar had a dream of that was interpreted as four kingdoms with the statue or the image of the beast that he saw. But here in Daniel chapter 7, Daniel has another vision. There's four kingdoms. But the interesting thing is Babylon is about ready to be destroyed. He has this vision in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon. And if you go to chapter 5 of Daniel, you'll see that he was the king that Persia destroyed. And so Belshazzar was the last king of Babylon. And the interpretation the angel gives Daniel of, of Daniel chapter 7 tells Daniel that these four beasts that Daniel sees are four kings that will arise after of Belshazzar. Now the interesting thing is this fourth beast that he sees sounds exactly like the fourth kingdom that he described in Daniel chapter 2. And I'm going to read starting with the fourth beast. Daniel 7 verse 7. After this I saw in the night visions and behold a fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth, iron, iron teeth. Remember iron from Daniel chapter 2. Iron doesn't mix with clay. It had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in broken pieces and stomped what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another horn, a little one, before which three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Interestingly, right after this, for the next few v verses, or two verses, we see a picture of the Ancient of Days, and I'm going to um, skip, though, to verse 11. I looked then because of the sound of the great words that the horn was speaking. And as I looked, the beast was killed and its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. And then it goes into two more verses that deal with the coming of the Ancient of Days and the establishment of his kingdom that will not be destroyed. So we're seeing that this stone kingdom established here at the end of the time of this little horn that Daniel sees in this vision. Now it's very interesting. I'm going to read 11 and 12 again. I looked then because of the sound of the great words that the horn was speaking. This beast that rules the world right now. I don't think we see who the actual puppet master is. We see the puppets all saying these things that are just absurd. Craziness is what we hear today. Absolute insanity is what we are experiencing today. And as I looked, the beast was killed. So this horn, this horn is part of this beast that he's seeing. It was killed and its body was destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. And as for the rest of the beast, their dominion was taken away. But their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I believe these beasts 
were other kingdoms, other nations that exist in the earth. And these nations are not going to be destroyed when the kingdom of God is first established. They're going to continue for a while. However, the little horn, that beast that produces the little horn, which I believe is the seventh, the seventh beast, the seventh beast of, of Revelation, the seventh head of the beast, I believe the little horn comes from that beast. I believe that Trump is the eighth head of the beast and was the one who exposed Babylon the Great. But I believe that the one controlling the world right now is still the seventh beast and the little horn in particular. So now let's go down and, and read what the interpretation is of this beast starting in 715 of Daniel. As for me, Daniel, my spirit within me was anxious, and the visions of my head alarmed me. I approached one of those who stood there and asked him the truth concerning all this. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of the things. These four great beasts are four kings who shall arise out of the earth. But the Kodeshim, the holy ones, the saints, Bibles usually say saints here, but the word saint has been destroyed. So I use the word Kodeshim, which means holy one or holy ones. The holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever, and ever. Then I desire to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the rest. Different from all the rest. Exceedingly terrifying with its teeth of iron and claws of bronze, in which devoured and broke in pieces and stomped what was left with its feet, and about the ten horns that were on its head. Now, since there's ten horns on its head, it's possible that this is speaking of the eighth head of the beast, because... Revelation chapter 17 says that 10 kings will arise and support the eighth head of the beast. So this may be actually speaking of the eighth head of the beast here. And then the 10 horns that go along with that. And the other horn that came up and before which three of them fell, the horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke great things and that seemed greater than its companions. As I looked... This horn made war with the Kodeshim and prevailed over them. Prevailed over the holy people. This beast, this little horn, this king that is more powerful than its companions prevails over the holy people. In chapter 12, which we'll read later, it says, the angel reveals that it prevails until the power of the holy people is finally destroyed. Well, I believe the p power of the holy people has been destroyed. The holy people have no power. As I looked, this horn made war with the Kodeshim and prevailed over them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given for the holy ones of the Most High. And the time came when the holy ones possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, As for the fourth beast, there shall be a fourth kingdom on earth which shall be different from all the kingdoms, and it shall devour the whole earth. What is happening now is happening across the whole earth. You wonder, how could it be that country after country is going into lockdown, that country after country is imposing the same mandate upon its citizens. How could that possibly be? Well, because this beast controls the world. It controls all of the countries of the world.
It shall devour the whole earth and trample it down and break it to pieces. As for the ten horns, out of this kingdom ten kings shall arise, and another shall arise after them. You know, we might speculate forever about who those ten kings are. This one that shall arise after them shall be different from the former ones, and he shall put down three kings. He shall speak words against the Most High and shall wear out the Kodeshim of the Most High and shall think to change the times and the law. He shall think to change the times and the law. How long has this beast ruled the earth? Could it be that it's been 200 years or... 250 years, maybe starting around 1776. You see, the history that we have been told is a lie. They have lied to us about everything. If you don't understand that the moon landing was a hoax, if you don't understand that we live on a flat earth, then you haven't looked deeply enough into the lies that they've told us. They have lied about everything. They lie about food, what foods are good for us. They lie about medications. They lie about everything. They hid our history Recently, in the last few years, there's come to light uh, that there must have been a civilization called Tartaria, T-A-R-T-A-R-I-A. And uh, there's some interesting websites and books out there that you can look at concerning Tartaria. And the structures are just, they're simply amazing. When you take the time to look at them and you realize especially if, when you're as old as I am, when you realize they never build anything like that anymore. How did they do it? Why were these huge structures everywhere? They, this little horn shall think to change the times. It's very possible that even dates, they've lied about dates, about the times past. Did we really have a Middle Ages? See, they've hidden the truth from us and, and therefore they've made it difficult. Well, they've tried to make it difficult for us to find God and to find the truth. And so you have to work, you have to search, you have to look, you have to be diligent. You have to spend time seeking the truth for yourself and don't depend upon what others say because most people will only regurgitate what they get from someone else. John says in 1 John, you need that no man teach you. Each of us are to find the truth. Each of us are to find the word of God. The word of God, the word became flesh and dwelt for a while among us. We are to find that word. But most people stumble over the word of God. They stumble over the stumbling stone. They stumble over the one who became flesh, who redeemed us from the curse of sin. So this little horn shall, shall think to change the times and the law. Think to change the law. I'm a lawyer. I am in my 33rd year of practicing law. And it is breathtaking to me how lawless our country is. I saw it years and years ago, but didn't perceive the ubiquitous nature of the lawlessness. 
I actually wrote a book in 1993 called No Justice in the Land, and it was uh, just after the O.J. Simpson trial where I knew that was just a ridiculous verdict that freed that man and realized that our nation was lawless. And that was also my first year as a Missouri state representative. And it just became more and more clear. I saw bribery. My belief is that no, nothing becomes a law unless bribery was part of making it become law. So the little horn shall think to change the times and the law. That's been done. And they, the Kodeshim, shall be giving, given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. Now, that's a very interesting phrase. You see it a couple of times in the book of Daniel. But you also see it in the book of Revelation, and you see it written several ways in the book of Revelation. You see it written as 42 months. You see it written as 1260 days. You see it written as a time, times, and half a time. And so Daniel is talking about the time that the book of Revelation is talking about. You could start in Revelation 10 and then go forward from there. I think we have, be I think we really began to see the incredible judgments of the book of Revelation come into effect around the year 1776. But it's really, it's so obscured that there's no way to prove it to anyone. So right after this, the Kodashim are given into the hand of this beast, this final beast, the little horn, for a time, times, and half a time. Verse 26, Daniel 7, 26. But the court shall sit, sit in judgment, and his dominion shall be taken away, to be consumed and destroyed to the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the Kodeshim of the Most High. His kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Now I said that this video was called The Indignation. Why? If we go to Daniel, again, Daniel chapter 8, 8 verse 19 says this, an angel speaks to Daniel and says, Behold, I will make known to you what shall be at the latter end of the indignation, for it refers to the appointed time of the end. That was Daniel 8 19. And then Daniel eleven thirty six says this, And the king shall do as he wills. I believe this is speaking of the little horn, the last king of the final beast kingdom. Daniel eleven thirty six, 36, and the king shall do as he wills. He shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak astonishing things against the god of gods, against the most high, against I am. He shall prosper until the indignation is accomplished. He shall prosper the little horn, the king, the final king of the final beast kingdom. He shall prosper until the indignation is accomplished. For what is decreed shall be done. Then I want to go to Daniel chapter 12. And I think I'm just going to read you the entire last chapter of Daniel. At that time, the time where you have this destruction going on from the little horn, at that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never has been since there was a nation until that time. 
We are living in the time of trouble. We are living at the time of the end of the indignation. This is the worst time of trouble that has ever been in the world. And the reason is, is because what is happening now could literally destroy all flesh. Because what they're trying to do is merge man with machine. They are trying to destroy God's creation. What they're giving to people is changing DNA. It's changing the blood of people. It's changing them from something that was human to something that will, they think, mix with a machine, mix with iron, but it will not work. But at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, two others stood, one on this side of the stream and one on that bank of the stream. And someone said to the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the stream, How long shall it be till the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the stream. He raised his right hand and his left hand toward heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it would be for a time, times, and half a time. There's that phrase again. And that when the shattering of the power of the holy people comes to an end, all these things would be finished. When the shattering of the power of the holy people comes to an end, all these things would be finished. I heard, but I did not understand. Then I said, O oh my Lord, what shall be the outcome of these things? This is something that no one has understood yet. Christians, most Christians, are still looking for a great revival, a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, huge numbers of people coming into the churches, filling the churches, glory, grandeur, singing praises, on and on and on. But this is the end. This is the end of this paradigm. There's not going to be a great revival. This is the time of the end. The power of the holy people is destroyed. Read again Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. I know you have but little power. And I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming upon the, old, the whole earth in order to try them. That's why, that's what this is. Everything is being shaken that could be shaken. I'm being shaken. Are you being shaken? Everything is being shaken that could be shaken. Our faith is being tried. Our faith is being challenged. This is hard. This is difficult. It's hard to live through. We don't know what it's going to look like. We never thought it would look like this. It's disgusting. It's sickening. It's horrible to see that no one ever pays the penalty for their egregious crimes against humanity. That the devil always wins. That the beast always wins. That they always prevail. They never ever are held to account. So why is this happening? 
Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 1. Verse 1, the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos. Verse 2, hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord, for I am, for Yahuwah has spoken. Children I have reared and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner and the donkey its master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Israel was called by God to be his son, to be his example of righteousness in the earth. Likewise, the church was called to be his firstborn son and the example of righteousness in the earth. But both Israel, the northern kingdom of Israel, and the southern kingdom of Judah, all of Israel became corrupt. Isaiah wrote this while both still existed. He wrote this before the northern kingdom had been destroyed. Israel refers to all of God's chosen people, including the northern kingdom of Israel, the southern kingdom of Judah, and Christians. Christians, who is a true Jew? One who believes Jesus Christ is his king. And we are grafted into the tree of Israel who believe that. So all of Israel, except the Kodeshim, except the Holy Ones, went astray. Verse 4, Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, children who deal corruptly. They have forsaken I am. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They are utterly estranged. Why will you still be struck down? Why will you continue to rebel? The whole head is sick. The whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there's no soundness in it. But bruises and sores and raw wounds, they're not pressed out or bound up or softened with oil. The whole body is sick. The whole body of Israel, the whole body of Christ is sick. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there's no soundness in it. But bruises, sores, raw wounds. Verse 7, your country lies desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Wow. Applied then when Assyria attacked northern kingdom of Israel, when Assyria attacked the southern kingdom of Judah with the help of Israel. Cities were burned with fire then. Cities are burned with fire today. What did we see last year with BLM riots, Antifa riots? Our cities are burned with fire. In your very presence, foreigners devour your land. We have an unrestricted flow of foreigners coming into our land on purpose. In your very presence, foreigners devour your land. It is desolate, is overthrown by foreigners. And the daughter of Zion is left like a booth in a vineyard, like a lodge in a cucumber field, like a besieged city. If I am of hosts had not left us a few survivors, we should have been like Sodom and become like Gomorrah. In other words, utterly destroyed. But there is a promise for a few survivors. There's a promise for a stump, for a remnant. That is the Kodeshim, the Holy Ones. Then Isaiah 1.10. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says I am. I've had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of well-fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or, the, or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who is required of you this trampling, trampling of my courts? Bring no more vain offerings. Incense is an abomination to me. 
new moon and Sabbath and the calling of convocations. I cannot endure iniquity and solemn assembly. Back in the early 90s, I coined a phrase called big event theology, where everybody, all the big preachers, always had these big events. Thousands of people would come expecting great, glorious miracles of God. It's all been a hoax. It's, it's, it's been one false prophet after another. One lying prophet after another. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I'm weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Bring justice to the fatherless. Plead the widow's cause. And now moving down to Isaiah 1, verse 21. How the faithful city has become a harlot. She who was full of justice. Righteousness lodged in her, but now murderers. The faithful city, Jerusalem. Your silver has become dross, your best wine mixed with water. Your princes are rebels and companions of thieves. Everyone loves a bribe and runs after gifts. They do not bring justice to the fatherless, and the widow's cause does not come to them. Therefore I am declares, I am of hosts, the mighty one of Israel. Ah, I will get relief from my enemies and avenge myself on my foes. I will turn my hand against you and I will smelt away your dross as with lye and remove all your alloy. And I will restore your judges as at the first and your counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, you shall be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. This is speaking of Jerusalem again, but now it's talking about New Jerusalem. As we read Isaiah especially, we need to make distinctions between Old Jerusalem and New Jerusalem. 127. Zion shall be redeemed by justice, and those in her who repent by righteousness. But rebels and sinners shall be broken together, and those who forsake I am shall, shall be consumed. So what is the indignation then? Well, God is indignant. Going back to verse 2, we see why. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. Children have I reared and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner and the donkey its master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. God blessed his people. He blesses his people. He blessed Israel with abundance, with every good thing, and yet they became worshipers of false gods and demons. And so the indignation is dealing with the time where God finally brings judgment upon his creation, upon people because they rejected their creator, their own creator. And then as it moves into chapter 2, I want to... Um, end with this area because this is showing where the indignation leads. The indignation is leading to the kingdom of God being established. So in chapter 2, the word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, it shall come to pass in the latter days 
that the mountain of the house of I am shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills. Mountains are governments in Scripture. Daniel's interpretation of the statue, the stone that hit the statue's feet, grew up into a huge mountain in the earth. That's what this is. It shall be lifted up above the hills, and all nations shall flow to it. And many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of I Am, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of I Am from Jerusalem. We're talking about New Jerusalem here, Mount Zion, another word for the mountain of the Lord. He shall judge between the nations and shall decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up nation. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come let us walk in the light of the Lord. Next, chapter 2 of Isaiah moves into a description of the day of the Lord. Uh, I think you should read that starting in verse 6. And it, it talks about specific judgments that are coming, going on down to 20. In that day, the day of the Lord, the day that we're in right now, in that day mankind will cast away their idols of silver and their idols of gold which they made for themselves to worship, to the moles and to the bats, to enter the caverns of the rocks and the clefts of the cliff. From before the terror of I am, and from the splendor of his majesty when he rises to terrify the earth. Stop regarding man in whose nostrils is breath, for of what account is he? The mark of the beast is here. The question is, are we going to take it in order to buy and sell? Are we going to take it in order to preserve our lives of flesh? This time is of God, and the reason it's here is because he is indignant. This is the day of indignation. And this is the time when God rises to terrify the earth. We are in terrifying times. And so we have to endure to the end. As many of Dana Coverstone's dreams said, we have to remain braced until the end. We cannot become unbraced from now on until... This time is over. Then I want to leave you with one other scripture to think about. Isaiah chapter 26. I would encourage you to read that whole chapter also because it's very poignant. But the last two verses say this, 26, 20, and 21. Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until the indignation has passed by. For behold, I am is coming out from his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And the earth will disclose the blood shed on it and will no more cover its slain. This is where we are. This is the time of the indignation. This is the time when God comes 
to judge the earth for its gross sin. The challenge for us now is to believe, to believe in I am, to believe in the word of God, to believe in the first and the last, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. To believe in the man who was fully God, who came to redeem us and who died for us. Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, the Holy One of Israel. For behold, the Lord is coming out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their sin. And the earth will disclose all the blood shed on it and will not cover its slain. This is a time of great change. We're never going back to the way it was. If you're still in Babylon, if you're still partaking of any of the sins of Babylon, people are being coerced because they want to continue indulging in the pleasures of Babylon. I caution you to get out of Babylon. 